Yeah, more Total Drama. After three seasons, Total Drama went back to Camp Wawanaqua, ready to introduce audiences to a new cast of characters and a new set of crazy challenges. Alright guys, you know what to do. Which season 4 challenges were a cakewalk and which were a nightmare? Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is Total Drama Revenge of the Island Challenges. Gruesome to most gruesome. Just so we're all on the same page, we're going to be looking at several factors as we determine which challenges are the most gruesome, including difficulty, discomfort, pain level, and danger level. Challenges that score high in all these factors will receive a high ranking. Additionally, if a challenge has multiple parts, we're going to be looking at all the parts together for an overall gruesome rating. As always, we're going to be starting with our easiest and least gruesome challenges, before working our way up to our most gruesome and terrifying. Okay, let's go! Starting with our least gruesome challenge, we have the Go-Kart Challenge. Coming right after the merging of the teams, each camper must find a hidden key in Chef's Kitchen. The keys all go to a go-kart, which they must drive around the island, and the first camper to spray paint a mark on all three monuments wins the challenge. At the risk of making a pun, we have to say that this is a pretty low-key challenge. The first part of the challenge, the keys aren't really hidden in dangerous spots and are easy to grab once they're found. The only danger are the giant cockroaches, but even they aren't much. Although the campers have to briefly deal with laser-eyed squirrels before getting into their cars, the driving portion of the challenge is surprisingly not too difficult either. There aren't many dangers, nor is there a huge risk of injury outside of the crash risk that naturally comes with the go-kart challenge, as there aren't really a ton of crazy obstacles that the contestants have to avoid. If a person is a good driver and knows where they're going, this challenge may be fun instead of gruesome or painful. For these reasons, we felt that this challenge earned the title of Least Gruesome. For our second Least Gruesome, we had to go with the Search and Rescue Challenge. Campers must race towards the shore. Once there, they have to save either Gwen or Sam from a buried chest. Again, the contestants deal with a giant squid and fang while in the water, although it's only briefly. For the team that wins the first portion of the challenge, it's just a bit easier for them, as they're able to use a map and a compass. It's still difficult, but those items certainly help. Later, the teams have to deal with alligators and the other dangers of a swamp. While getting attacked by an alligator is gruesome, is it really any more gruesome than the other animals that the campers have to deal with this season? What puts this challenge so low is that it's more of a gruesome challenge for Gwen and Sam than it is for the teams, as they are at risk of suffocating. It's morbid reasoning, but we still have to go with it. Following that, we have the Mount Looming Tragedy Challenge. Man, when a challenge that involves literal mountain climbing is this far down, you know you're in for a pretty crazy season. Campers must climb Mount Looming Tragedy, while at the same time avoiding falling ice blocks, courtesy of Chef. Once on top of the mountain, they must play a game of Capture the Flag, while trying to survive the icy elements. We'll acknowledge that climbing a mountain free-handed is no easy task, and while campers are given the option of using tools, they have to fight off a giant mutant beetle in order to get them, so yeah, not exactly a gimme. For those who struggle physically, this is a pretty rough first half, though not impossible, as B shows when he gets himself and his team to the top of the mountain. As for the game portion, teams only have to destroy each other's snow forts, not hurt each other. Never met a girl stronger than me, Captain. The only thing difficult about this part is all the snow and ice. Otherwise, it's really no more difficult or gruesome than your average snowball fight. Although the first half of this challenge was fairly difficult, the second half brings down its gruesome ranking. Next is the Scavenger Hunt Challenge. This episode has the two teams go on a scavenger hunt through three different environments, the forest, the cemetery, and a dark cave. Despite the scavenger hunt part, teams only need to reach the finish line with more surviving members than the other team in order to win. Throughout the hunt, the teams also have to avoid booby traps, as well as giant mutant spiders, much to Cameron's dismay, and even a giant squid at one point. Mutants and traps aside, this challenge really isn't too bad in terms of danger. The teams are forced to be clever as they decipher clues, so this challenge is about intelligence. 
Of course, there's still a physical element, and while the giant squid and the minefield are dangerous, they're also able to be avoided if the camper wishes to do so. The nature of the challenge allows each team to be flexible in how they approach it. It's also revealed at the end of the challenge that the giant spider was actually Izzy in disguise, meaning that, when it came to the spider at least, the contestants weren't in any danger. Although this challenge could easily stir up some panic in contestants like Cameron or Brick, who are afraid of spiders and the dark respectively, for the most part, it's a fairly straightforward challenge to get through. For these reasons, it gets a spot on the lower half of our list. Next is the Cook and Run Challenge. This challenge alludes to an old favorite from all the way back in the original Total Drama season, as contestants have to cook a dish. However, there are a couple of twists to this version of the challenge. Instead of having access to a full pantry, campers have to use ingredients from around the island. The contestants then have to eat their own dish before racing to the flagpole, while avoiding getting hit by Chef. Given all the dangers that can be found on the island, including toxic mushrooms and poison ivy, this challenge already seems pretty gruesome, even if it isn't too difficult. Three out of the four contestants get sick. Taking that into consideration, forcing them to run and hide while avoiding Chef's spaghetti gun afterwards is cruel. Now, fans of this season may remember that this is the episode where we get Commando Zoe, who ends up setting several traps that Chef has to avoid. One of these traps severely injures Scott, but because this wasn't part of the original challenge, we can't include it in the overall gruesome score. Outside of this major injury, while the challenge is still difficult, there are still a few more that manage to outshine it in terms of both danger and gruesomeness. Time to step up to the runway. Next is the Mutant Dress-Up Challenge. This is certainly unique. For this challenge, campers must dress up a mutated animal and send it down the runway. Afterwards, the teams have to rescue Lindsay from Boney Island after she's kidnapped by Sasquatch and Aqua. Will Lindsay survive? By this point in the season, it's been well established just how dangerous the island's mutant population is. You've got a giant mutant anglerfish, mutant sharks, turtles, and frogs. None of these animals are super easy to catch, and of course, that's only half the battle. But surprisingly, the actual dress-up portion of the challenge goes pretty smoothly. While this aspect depends on the animal that the teams choose, the flexibility of that choice does help in toning down the possible danger. Moving on to the impromptu rescue portion, rather than being at risk of being mauled by the Sasquatch creature, teams only really have to dodge the barrels being thrown at them, a la Donkey Kong. Again, the teams are able to approach the challenge from multiple angles, which can either increase or decrease the danger factor, depending on what plan they go with. Additionally, while it would hurt to get hit by one, flying barrels are hardly the most dangerous obstacle that has ever been on this show. It's the flexibility of this particular challenge, as well as mid-level difficulty, that allows it to rank lower on our list. Next, we have the Truth or Shark Obstacle Course Challenge. In the first half, campers had to either admit to an embarrassing fact about themselves, or get themselves and their whole team dunked in the lake where they'll have to deal with Fang, a four-legged shark. Then in the second half, the teams compete in a baton-passing relay race on an obstacle course suspended over a pit of mud. Although this challenge is one part embarrassing and one part physical, we don't consider it to be too bad. It may not be fun having your secrets revealed on TV, but based on the few questions that Chris asked before canceling the challenge, the reveal of these secrets wasn't exactly emotionally distressing. The only thing that boosts this challenge's gruesome factor are the brief interactions with Fang, considering that Scott nearly gets eaten. A shark tooth? As for the second half, the obstacles themselves are pretty rough, as they include giant baseball bats, mutant beavers, and wrecking balls. The contestants are also forced to wear glasses that blur their vision, just to add insult to injury. But even when considering the painful obstacles, an obstacle course over mud isn't too bad by, you know, total drama standards. Messy, painful, and exhausting, but certainly not dangerous in comparison to some other challenges that we've seen or will see. We arrive at the Battle Royale Challenge. For the final challenge of the season, the remaining two campers have to make a suit of armor out of various materials from a junk pile. Once their suit is complete, the two contestants have to duel each other. The only requirement to win is that your opponent has to be pinned to the ground for only three seconds. 
This is the main reason why we can't put this challenge any higher. For one, you could argue that the armor acts as decent padding, meaning that there's a chance that anyone participating in the challenge possibly wouldn't get as hurt as they would in other challenges. Second, the win condition isn't too bad. Tiring a person out enough to pin them for only 3 seconds isn't really too harmful to the other person. The only thing that makes this challenge into a brawl is Lightning's desire to beat Cameron to a pulp. If it was any other pair competing, you could argue that it wouldn't be nearly as harsh or violent. Although we can't forget the mutants that Chris brings whenever he gets bored with the fight. But again, the fact that the campers actually have armor to protect themselves this time around goes a long way. As such, we felt that it wasn't gruesome enough for us to place any higher. Next is the Aerial Challenge. The campers take to the skies by building a flying machine. Once they're in the air, they have to go through the aerial obstacle course, which includes hoops of real fire and flying mutant goats. The contestants also have to avoid the various awards of Chris's that are getting thrown at them by Heather as they try to catch her. Thankfully, the contestants are able to use a projectile of their own, that being mutant goat eggs, to fight back. Although the first half of this challenge is more intellectual, the second half really turns up the heat, literally. Being high in the air is already dangerous, but adding in the risk of getting burned or mauled by a mutant goat really brings it to a whole new level of gruesome. However, because they fly over water instead of solid ground, the risk turns out to be not quite as gruesome as it could have been. For this, we've lowered its ranking just a bit, although we still consider it to be a difficult and dangerous challenge. Next, we have the Totem Challenge. The first challenge really sets the tone for this season. While we can't call it the most gruesome, it's certainly up there. Teams had to cut their totem pole down from a tree. Super duper simple, right? Well, not exactly. Each of the totems has a bomb attached to it. Yeah, a bomb. So in order to deactivate the bomb, the teams have to then slide it down a hill and ride it down a waterfall before placing it on a tree stump between two cabins. Oh, and they only have seven minutes before the bomb explodes. See, it's challenges like this that really make you wonder how Chris got away with hosting for so long. The difficulties and dangers with this challenge are obvious. The contestants get help though, as one team gets a trampoline to help them reach their totem while the other gets a hacksaw that can be used to cut their rope. It's still difficult, and the challenge only gets more intense. While the race itself isn't too difficult, you can't forget that the teams are carrying a live bomb as they race, one that's strong enough to destroy an entire cabin. Falling down a waterfall is also nothing to sneeze at. Even with all this, there are still a couple of challenges that manage to be even more dangerous than this one. In the top three, we have the Water Ski and Seagull Shooting Challenge. Teams have to obtain some water skis from underwater. Afterwards, they have to set off more mines than the other team using their mutant seagull shooters in order to win the challenge. Any challenge that's going to involve explosives is going to get a higher ranking in terms of gruesomeness. No explosion? Not cool! Of course, any challenge that's in the water is going to involve sharks, which, yeah, never a good thing in terms of safety. Even if both factors are cartoony, we still have to acknowledge the danger. What makes the first portion of this challenge even riskier is that the contestants that are obtaining the water skis have to wear an old-fashioned diving suit while their teammates pump air into the suit. So not only do divers have to look out for Fang, but they also have to rely on their teams to make sure they don't drown. Considering how absent-minded this season's contestants can be, it's scary. The second half is as dangerous as it is difficult. Cameron gets seriously injured after he gets thrown onto the last mine. This moment definitely helps boost its ranking by showing just how dangerous and injury-inducing this challenge can be. Sorry, Cameron. We can't give it our top spot, as Joe was only forced to throw Cameron onto the mine after running out of seagulls to shoot. If she still had one left, Cameron likely wouldn't have gotten hurt. The danger factor is still there, obviously, but this out-of-the-ordinary circumstance doesn't play into the challenge itself and thus keeps it from getting put any higher. Hey, top three ain't bad. Next is the Flower Retrieval Challenge. The final three contestants race through the forest to retrieve a rare flower from Larry. Now, who's Larry? You may be asking. Oh, you know, just a giant mutant Venus flytrap that can eat a person whole. Ah, it's no big deal. Anyway, once they get the flower, they just have to race back to the finish line. Despite this challenge being so close to the season's finale, it really isn't too bad. 
Chris even gives the campers a map that they can use to help them find Larry, although the path on the map only goes so far, because Chris, dude's a jerk. There's also, of course, the usual forest danger, such as mutants and sinkholes, but those can be pretty easily avoided. The risk of getting eaten alive by a giant plant certainly boosts its gruesome factor. On the other hand, given that it's just a plant and not an animal or beast, it could be argued that it would be easier for someone to escape from its mouth if they were to be eaten, like how lightning does. But on the other hand, it also has the ability to chase down campers, so maybe it evens out. What makes this challenge tougher than some of the others is that the flower that the campers have to retrieve is actually Larry's bite sensor, which means that there is no way for anyone to grab it fast enough. In other words, campers have to be especially clever with this one if they don't want to get a limb bitten off. This challenge is gruesome, but we can't call it the most gruesome. The risk of getting eaten alive is bad, but not nearly as bad as getting blown up or getting radiation poisoning. Speaking of which, Finishing up our list, we have the Radioactive Mind Challenge. It really shouldn't be a surprise to see this challenge rank this high. Teams must search for the Gilded Crystal Ward in an old mine. Alright, that's not bad. It's essentially another scavenger hunt, right? No, it's not. The mine is radioactive. Jeez! And we thought live bombs were the peak of Chris McLean's recklessness. In a way, each contestant is given a Geiger detector with a 30-minute timer, and it's heavily implied that if they don't get out of the mine in time, they'll likely die from toxic exposure. Given that Dakota not only lost her hair but also eventually mutated after being in the mine, it's made clear that the danger is real. Chris also gives them all heavy backpacks that they have to wear in the mine until he says to drop them, further adding to the difficulty of the challenge. Also, it turns out the backpacks have bombs in them. Since Chris essentially just wanted to use the contestants to blow up the mine and get the feds off their back. Alright, that's an effective strategy, but seriously, what is with this guy and bombs this season? Still want more danger? How about giant mutant gophers and a feral Ezekiel? This challenge is crazy, y'all, and considering how close contestants like Joe and Lightning get to dying, it's not only the most dangerous and gruesome challenge of this season, but probably one of the most gruesome challenges of the entire Total Drama series. All right, guys, that's all for the gruesomeness. Let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our most gruesome playlist, where we break down the most gruesome moments in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.